Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. By the way, we're going to do uh, a Newsmakers Extra. Congressman Brady and I, we, we get together, we know we need three hours. We always do. So we'll do the next two hours on, it's not going to be that long, but we'll do another <laughs> extra, Newsmakers Extra. We're going to continue to talk a little bit more about um, the activity as it relates to the impeachment conversations and maybe the shadow foreign policy, Giuliani. We'll maybe talk about that too as well. On Newsmakers Extra on click to houstoncom Let's talk about health care. Um, initially, Republicans really were were uh, gung-ho about repealing and replacing. That didn't happen. But what are your concerns and what's your focus going forward for putting some health care into place that, that the American people are really going to want and need going yeah. forward? So, I look, I'm not a fan of the Affordable Care Act. I don't think it's sustainable. I am pleased that for two years in a row, under President Trump, prices have gone down in the Affordable Care Act plans. And for the Houston area, people have almost doubled the choices they had before. I think that at least helps provide some relief. But we need to move on in a big way. And I think there's two areas we can find common ground. Again, impeachment tends to destroy everything. We are trying to protect work on ending surprise medical bills, mm -hmm. which people get when they go to the to the um, emergency room mm -hmm. uh, or even for planned procedures they have. The second one is I'm convinced we can find common ground on lowering drug prices in America. This is something certainly on Ways and Means Committee, Republicans, Democrats have spent most of the year trying to find common ground. We've got some work to do uh, in that area, but I think it'd be great for people to, to frankly have lower out-of-pocket costs, mm -hmm. never worry about that two or three thousand dollar extra bill that they get that they can't afford. You know, I think though, rather than impeachment, I think these are the problems we need to be solving. So you never came around to saying, well, OK, some of that Affordable Care Act, maybe we could just change some of this and make it better. You, you well, never came around to that. So I didn't mainly because I think it's unsustainable over time. It it it. it focuses on fewer and fewer Americans. It didn't focus on affordability, which I really think is the reason people don't have health care in Texas. We have as many people who couldn't use the Affordable Care Act that, that actually got on it. So I just think the design was always flawed. And politics got in the way of that, too, because Medicaid expansion and those kinds of things that would have helped make that more efficient was blocked by Republican governors around the way. So, you, so every yeah, state has yeah. to decide yeah. how they fund it. And for a lot of states, Medicaid is already eating up their education budget, their infrastructure budget, their, you know what I mean, health care mm -hmm. budgets. And so I think Texas had to make a decision on where their dollars were best used. That's one of those things where you wish that somehow or another people would say, you know, let's try something here in the middle and let it go. But it was always being chipped at from every side about the politics of it. But what happened to the low-hanging fruit of infrastructure? That, that, <laughs> where, is that still out there? I mean, because that's no. something that seems like everybody would say, we need this. It is, and, and again, another promise that I think one, President Trump certainly wants to do this. Republicans do. I, I believe sincerely Democrats do. The problem, again, impeachment is it drives away everything up in Congress. For example, Democrats have issued more subpoenas in the investigation than have passed laws to the president, including post office naming. My point is this. We've got to set aside some uh, um, of the impeachment waste of time and really focus on things like immigration solutions, infrastructure, surprise medical bills. I, we're capable of finding solutions. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that. I want to double back and talk about that because you keep saying impeachment, impeachment is getting in the way of everything. We're going to talk more about Great. that. Newsmakers Extra, we're going to do that. Probably. And welcome to Houston Newsmakers and welcome once again to our good friend Congressman Kevin Brady, Republican from the 8th Congressional District. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Canberra. I love, love being on with you. We, you know, we love being here. I'm still waiting for you to come visit your yes, brother. Sir. You know, yes, sir. we got the barbecue. We're ready to That's have right. it. There. So uh, we're here to talk about the things that are most important to your constituents in your district, what are they telling you are the most important things to them right now? Yeah, right now, certainly jobs in a big way. The economy's gone very well. Um, but right now, I think the economy can grow even more if we have more workers. And that's one of our biggest challenges for small businesses and, frankly, any business. But we also need more customers for our companies here in Texas and the U.S. That's why this new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement uh, is so important to Texas and our region. But I'd argue it's important for 
Mexico, Canada, and the whole world to have a modernized trade agreement with U.S. at the center of it. What is it that makes it so important? I mean, what, yeah. what, what are the key elements of that that make it important for Texas? Yeah, so for us, our biggest customers are Mexico and Canada, so much so they are bigger than the next 10 countries combined. Uh, not only do we sell a lot to them, but when you put the strengths of Mexico, our longtime trading partner, and Canada together with U.S. businesses, we're able to compete better around the world with the Chinas, the Europe's, and the others. So, you know, families get uh, uh, goods that they can afford. Uh, our businesses sell more made in Texas goods to our two big trading partners. Mm -hmm. And then together, we're able to compete and win more around the world. It's really a, a big win-win trade agreement. How soon is that going to get across the finish line? So I'm hopeful this year. I think it's really crucial because every day we delay, we actually give an advantage to China and other countries. There's a lot of bipartisan work that's been done. I've devoted most of the past year to this, uh, as has Henry Cuellar, Democrat leader uh, here from Texas as well and so we're hopeful we can get the president's desk it's it's crucial and a lot of good work's been done Democrats will say that um, um, the interest of the American people is uh, part of what's going on here now is with the president and they're looking into the actions of the president in terms of the impeachment inquiry it started a few weeks ago we're getting comments from both sides of yeah. the aisle about that what say you about look I, I was here during the Clinton Congress during the Clinton impeachment um, I know above all impeachment uh, has to be fair uh, it has to be bipartisan, at least the process. It needs to be open to the American public. People have to have due process. Uh, and we did provide that to President Clinton and to Democrats. That's absent right now. This has been a secret impeachment process, very partisan. Uh, until last week, didn't even have a vote to do an inquiry. Uh, and I just think, look, um, at the end of the day, this appears to me uh, to be an opportunity for Democrats to either overturn the elections uh, of 60 million Americans or uh, to try to damage the president just for purely political reasons. I think that's a terrible way to go. You know, we've been in such a, a, a visceral partisan environment for such a long time. And this whole thing continues to be that way, including both sides talking about the fact that it's in secret. Well, you know, we have the committees that were doing this thing. This Were you part of the group that went down and went down into the bowels of the... I was thing? not. We were doing okay. a, uh, holding a hearing but, on drug pricing. See, so my point with all of that is like, wait a minute, there are like 45, 50, so there are a lot of Republicans on all those committees who could be a part of the conversation. And so to say that it's being held without us being able to know, that wasn't exactly true. It's kind of like a bending. So I, I, I disagree with you there, having been there again for the Clinton impeachment. Those hearings were open. The President Clinton could call their own witnesses. They could challenge the ones who were there. So I can't tell you what's in those transcripts until they're released. I can't participate in there. The American public can't see it. And the truth of the matter is, um, uh, Chairman Schiff, picks only his witnesses. Uh, we don't, aren't allowed to call our witnesses. Sometimes he doesn't allow them to answer Republican questions. All of it's done in hiding. Isn't I think that, that's a bad way to Isn't go. that changing now with the public uh, uh, hearings that are going to be happening here coming well, up Well, he's now? starting, but basically what they have done is try to legitimize a very illegitimate process. And they will say that this is the process that they had planned all along and now responding. Obviously, Republicans will say, ah, you're, yeah. you're doing, you're pushing, you're doing things that we want you to do uh, ultimately. But they would say that, look, you had a special counsel before. There were a lot of there were different circumstances in those previous things, and so now we're doing this and now public hearings what are you concerned about next week when we start to see these people who have been witnesses up to this point transcripts now are being made available what are you concerned about as they come forward and they say that what they said in these transcripts yeah i'm American not concerned people? i've read the transcripts that have been made public there is no impeachable offense nothing close to it and what i am most alarmed about is the democrats will block the Republicans' request for witnesses. Uh, they, who earlier said the whistleblower should be made public, let's have that uh, question of now is hiding the whistleblower? Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that somewhere along the way, Democrats here have said they wanted to Yes, Chairman have... Schiff, remember, he insisted that this whistleblower be able to testify, to be able to be, able to be questioned and, and made public. Uh, now they've changed their tune, they're hiding him away. Look. If you've got great evidence and you're and you are running a fair process, why do it in secret? Why deny due process both to the president and to Republicans? Seems to me this is such a grave issue that it ought to be fair 
and it ought to be bipartisan. What, what we've gotten away from is the central point, which has brought this all about in the first place. You said you read the transcripts. The transcripts yeah. you were talking about were either the transcripts of those people who were testifying or the president's call to the Ukrainian president. So did, did both, as you would imagine. Uh, and here the central question is, has anything the president done? Um, is that worth overturning the will of the American public and 60 million voters' answers, n n nothing close to that. And that's going to be the decision that's going to happen, because some people will say, well, you know, yeah, we want these Javelin missiles. Yeah, we, we'll do that, but I need a favor first. I mean, that, that's yeah. kind of what those transcripts say. Yeah, and so Democrats yeah. are saying that, you know, you're taking Democrats, both houses said we're going to give this money to the uh, Ukrainians so they can do this. But the president said, well, we're going to do that, but, you know, we need this little favor. We want you to investigate. Yeah, but if you the read the transcripts, I know I you did. You're I so did. smart. The favor he asked was for them to, to cooperate with the criminal investigation that's been being done by the Justice Department about what began this whole fake rush occlusion issue. It wasn't about the Biden investigation. So I know you know that, but I'll tell you this, Democrats, in, in my view, uh, at the heart of this, uh, and I think our friend... Congressman Al Green sort of slipped up and told the truth when he said, I'm concerned if we don't impeach him, President Trump will be reelected. I just don't think you start a constitutional crisis for purely political reasons. Well, I think that uh, there are clearly very deeply entrenched positions on both sides, and we need like two hours to go ahead and get that we out. We do, so and right. a lot more sunshine. <laughs> a lot more, more sunshine. sunshine.